Hey everyone, it's Mike Hanbury with FlipNerd.com. Welcome back for another exciting expert interview show where I interview great guests from across the real estate investing industry and other entrepreneurs, as with today, to help you learn and inspire you. Uh, today's show is really going to be awesome um, uh, in terms of helping you kind of grow your business uh, and kind of have the business that we all aspire to have. Today we're joined by Frank Curtin, who is an expert in business process design and system design. And uh, I don't want to bore you with those words, so hang with me here. So Frank, is uh, he's also a recovering uh, real estate investor as well, but he works with a lot of really high caliber uh, real estate investors and lots of other small and medium-sized businesses to help improve their operations. So as you know, if you're listening to this, the struggle with a lot of real estate investors is that we're entrepreneurs and uh, we got in this for all the freedoms that it provides. But as entrepreneurs, we all too often get caught up and kind of chained to our business to where... Even if we're doing well financially, we're just maybe not enjoying the very freedoms that we got into this business to do. And that's kind of how self-employment works. Uh, sometimes we may just create another J-O-B for ourselves. So Frank sees that all the time and helps solve these problems for a lot of small businesses and small entrepreneurs like us. And today, that's exactly what we're going to talk about is business systems and processes to help us really have a business and not a job and help us enjoy our lives more. Before we get started with Frank, though, let's take a moment to recognize our featured sponsors. RealtyMogul.com is an online marketplace for real estate investing, connecting borrowers and capital from accredited and institutional investors. Get a rehab loan fast and close in as little as 10 days with rates starting as low as 9%. For more information, call 888-296-1697. B2R Finance makes loans tailored specifically for rental investors. They can help you unlock equity from existing properties so you can get cash out to grow your rental portfolio. That's huge and opens up lots of opportunities previously not available to rental investors. Need a loan? Call 855-819-4412 or visit b2rfinance.com today. AceBusinessFunding.com can help you get up to $150,000 in revolving credit lines to fund your business with rates as low as 0% for the first 12 to 18 months. Use the funds for startup costs, marketing, inventory, or almost anything your business needs. If you can't get funding, you don't pay a dime. Get funds for your business today at acebusinessfunding.com. We'd also like to thank Specialized IRA Services, National Real Estate Insurance Group, and virtualstaffnow.com. Please note, the views and opinions expressed by the individuals in this program do not necessarily reflect those of flipnerd.com or any of its partners, advertisers, or affiliates. Please consult professionals before making any investment or tax decisions, as real estate investing can be risky. Hey, Frank, welcome to the show. Oh, hey. Wait, hi, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you're here. It's uh, We were talking about this. I, I feel those pains of myself uh, in myself a lot. I think, you know, a lot of people assume that, uh, you know, I've got it all figured out. I've got a podcast. We've got somehow we got Frank Curtin on the show even. <laughs> uh, I've done hundreds of shows. I bought hundreds of houses. I do all this stuff. And it's been great. It's been a great life for me. But uh, we work hard. You know, we work hard. And I right. think a lot of small businesses, um, even if you do well sometimes, Sometimes you feel like you're in a bit of a hamster wheel, right? Oh, without a doubt. You know, yeah. it's funny you say that about, you know, starting up, you know, doing business on your own. A lot of yep. people leave the corporate world thinking, oh, the freedoms I'm going to get with my business. So they trade in that 40 to 50 hour work <laughs> week for an 80 hour work week. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great freedom. Especially real estate because, you know, so many people have been conditioned to think, well, it's just easy. Yeah, they do it on TV. You just, right. you know, slap some paint on something and make 30 grand. And it's like, ah, oh, not quite that easy. <laughs> Come on, Turk and Christina make it look easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, I'm excited to talk about this because, um, you know, I, I aspire for people that kind of follow the show. A big part of what we do at Flip Nerd is we really want people to have a better life through real estate investing, yeah. prove the life of their families, their communities, all those things. My wife, Lindsay, and I are very passionate about that for ourselves and for everybody around us. Yet we see so many people get in a situation where they just are maybe solopreneurs and they're working their tail off. And, you know, you've, you, you, in your mind, you're building a business. But um, if you stop working tomorrow or something happened to you tomorrow or you wanted to take a vacation or something, then everything kind of stops or gets, you know, kind of messed up. So it's a really important topic and I'm, I'm glad you're here. Oh, it, uh, I'm great. You know, a question I ask people a, a lot, you know, when they're, you know, in business for themselves is I'll say, if you took a vacation for 30 days, what would your business look like when you returned? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. There's an indication for how much um, 
automation you've got in place and how much, how many systems, how your systems are operating for you to earn you money when yep. you're not present. So yeah. that's always yeah. a good segue. And I know we're going to talk about systems too. And it's not just mm -hmm. like, Hey, I have an app for that. It's like, what are the, what are the systems or how you process things? Right. So, Hey, right. before we get too deep into this, why don't you tell us you, you have a, a really incredible background. Uh, why don't you kind of share your background um, and kind of how you got to where you are today? Sure. Um, I, I've got over 25 years in project management type work. Uh, I used to be an environmental consultant. My my undergrad degree was in geology of all things. So of course <laughs> that would put you with houses and digging dirt, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, so I was in uh, environmental uh, geology doing project management for a while. I went back and got my MBA. So I've got a, an advanced degree from Harvard and and I also have an MBA from Ohio State. I left um, out of the MBA program and went right to IBM and I worked as a management consultant. I was doing business process work. Yep. So I'd go into these large Fortune 500, Fortune 1000, Fortune 2000 type companies, and we'd do these really big engagements. This would be anywhere from $10 million to $250 million. Yeah. So a lot of people doing a lot of things. And my job primarily was to do uh, process work. And it, it was a lot of fun doing that kind of stuff because you're sitting there actually observing what people are doing and sort of they don't even realize what they do. You know, so it's just like many of us, we do things all the time. We don't even realize we do half the things we do. Somebody right. said, hey, tell me the top 10 things you did today. They probably come up with three. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they probably did hundreds, but they right, can only right, right. Pick three. So that's an example. So worked at IBM for a number of years. Um, in 2001, I left IBM and uh, decided uh, I needed to spend time with my family and I had young kids at home. I was on the road for five weeks a year that was too much yeah. so put my five years in with IBM thought that was great you know got good experience with them uh, so I started my entrepreneurial road and so I started flipping houses I, I did uh, short sales you know short sales got big right around the 2002 2003 mark yeah. they were pretty popular even though the real estate market was growing fast there were still plenty of foreclosures and not a lot of people in it right right I was doing that in the DFW market I uh, had a couple of people doing that with um, right around the 2006 mark uh, things changed a little bit. We started to get into spec home building and uh, building McMansions. And so I've got experience with, uh, you know, buying and turning a house quickly, buying and renting them out, buying them and fixing them and then reselling them. And then lastly, scraping them, you know, scrape the dirt and raise a brand new house to these yeah. million dollar homes. And uh, right around 2008, you know, it's kind of like playing musical chairs. Yeah, there were no chairs for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had nowhere to sit when I was sitting there with all these houses. So yeah. that's what ended uh, my real estate run at that point. But because of my background, because of the process work, because of the project management work, when the product launches for the real estate gurus, if you will, or for these various individuals who sell products and services that teach others how to do real estate, I got involved with that. So they came to me, uh, started out with Tim. I love Tim's great guy. Yeah. And uh, he kind of got, he pulled me into it. I went in reluctantly kicking and screaming. He said, no, I don't want to do this. And he says, please help me with this. So I did. And I found out it was a, it was a need that the small business guy really needed. Yeah. I'm doing the launches. I was helping them. But what I did that was different than a lot of other people who assisted with launches. And as you know, there's tons of Jeff Walker disciples running around right. and yeah. stuff. What I did differently, though, is when I saw a business that was about to take on a lot of new clients, I'd look at their operations and see how ready they were for it. I'd be asking them questions. Can your customer service handle this? Can this happen? And little by little, people stopped hiring me for launches and started hiring me to fix their business because yeah. they realized I have this problem whether I launch or not. And so it's been evolving over the years into that, into now where I'm pretty much doing that regularly for small businesses. I see it all the time. Yep. Everyone that I talk to, they're, they're struggling. They hit a ceiling. They don't understand what the ceiling is. And there are tools and techniques that we can use to help people get past that. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, what, what, what is the difference between somebody that you may live a very good life and buy 20, 25 houses a year and some of the people that we know that are doing hundreds of houses a year mm -hmm. and, um, it's, it's, you know, systems and processes and business maturity and treating it like a business. And, you know, oftentimes it's finding ways to get yourself out of the way. It um, is. Uh, in, in fact, that's the number one thing is, you know, there's a term called letting go of the vine. And, and that's one, you know, Gino Wickman did a book called Traction. And for those people that have read it, and if you're not, if you're an entrepreneur and you haven't read it, I encourage you to do so. You definitely want to take a look at that because what he's talking about in that, um, about letting go of the vine is, we as entrepreneurs, we feel like we know what we need to do and we have a lot of um, knowledge about the things that we, we do as a practitioner in the business. Yeah. What we struggle with is trusting someone else to do what we need done. Yeah. We struggle with, it's like, 
you know, I could let somebody do that, but they're not going to do it as good as me. And so you yeah. just keep doing it. Well, you hit a human capital constraint. You only have so much time. And even if you do hire people, do you know what you're hiring them specifically for and how they're going to help you and all that? Most entrepreneurs, they kind of struggle with that. They deal with it from, well, I, I need an assistant. Okay, well, what's this assistant going to do? Well, I'm not sure yet. So they hire an assistant. Stuff. They're going to do stuff. Yeah, it's things. <laughs> I'll just give them things, you know. Well, these giving things, you also come with instructions, right? So you not only give the person something to do, you have to give them the instructions too. Right. Which means you're kind of still doing it. <laughs> so you're doing your job plus a little bit of their job. Sure. And every time you hire somebody without you know, proper documentation of getting all that great knowledge you have in your head out onto paper at some point, how are you going to actually expect somebody to deliver that same outcome that you could do without you being present? Right, right. It makes it very, very difficult. So yeah. Yeah, that's, and, that's where it comes from. And in small businesses, Frank, um, especially in real estate, let's say, you know, mm -hmm. the market, things change all the time. So how do you, how do you get to a point to where you don't train somebody how to do something that's so rigid that they can't evolve with you. I mean, especially as a real estate investor, a lot of times the owner of the business is, has all the knowledge and not just the knowledge for how to do certain things, or this is how we do it in our office, but just what's going on in the marketplace and how things are right. evolving. How do you, how do you get a team to evolve with you? I love that question because you know, there's only one thing that should stand the test of time and that's your principles. Yeah. Whatever principles you live by and, and you built your company around the core values that you truly set in place, those are the things that are they stand the test of time. Everything else is subject to change. Political, social, economic, anything could happen. Regulation, stroke. I've seen businesses get erased with a stroke of a pen. Cash businesses, you know, those 24-hour cash places? North yeah, Carolina yeah. had a friend with a $3 million book of business. With the stroke of a pen, they made it illegal and he was out of business the next day. Yeah, wow. So, those things happen. And in real estate, you got regulation all the time. And not just regulation at a government level, at the highest levels, it's at the state level. And right. then sometimes at the county level. And so you get so many nuances about how that business works. How do you stay in, you know, mobile and flexible and all that? Again, it goes back to your principles. You stay firm on your principles, but you have to be at the forefront of what you're doing. You cannot be in a closet. You can't be in your office. You can't be in your house, in your basement, and not getting out and finding out what's going on. You right. have to be engaging with people. It's really important for people to involve with like masterminds yeah. or with at least some sort of a social environment where other people are in the know and you're sharing knowledge back and forth. Yep. Then you also have to be open-minded. You have to identify and recognize when the market's starting to shift, you have to shift with it. You cannot say, well, we've always done it this way. That doesn't work. Ask Eastern Airlines. And if for some, who? I don't even know who that is. Exactly. Some of you <laughs> no are joke. So I have no idea. Who that you is. don't even know who they are. They were the largest airline in the eighties. Okay. In a nineteen eighty seven, eighty eighty nine, in that time frame. Yeah. On. Yeah. So they. Well, Frank, uh, kind of take us from the top. Like, where do people need to get started to kind of? I mean, how do they? How do people? Uh, should they even? It's hard. It's sometimes it's hard to even realize you have a pro <laughs> have a problem, right? Right. Like you just think you're just so caught up in the day to day stuff that it's hard to kind of step back. And uh, I know a lot of people, you know, as a consultant, a lot of people kind of pay you to come in. But there's a lot of small businesses that are hearing this that that probably don't have the resources to even do that. But right, if, if they think about, you know, I like everything I heard here. I read traction or whatever. Like, where where do they step back and uh, how how do they step back and kind of diagnose the situation for themselves that they may not even know they're in? I, I exactly. That's a great point. Um, when people are first starting and they're unaware of any of the stuff we're talking about, or they're they're just it's it's a it's a distant thing for them. If it's, right. if it's something like that, they start with 90 day goals. And the reason that you want to set up a 90 day goal pattern for something is you have to get discipline and focus in your business and in your activities. For us, for us little guys, for the ones that don't have a big staff of people to hand and delegate things off to, focus is the most important thing that's going to get you from point A to point B in the quickest, fastest amount of time. Okay. So if you think about it from this perspective, if I want to achieve a certain objective in 90 days and I stay focused on it, did you ever notice how Wall Street works? Everything is in 90 day cycles, Yeah. right? If I don't hit my numbers every 90 days when the quarterlies come out, it can be disastrous. You see layoffs, you see firings, you see celebrations, you see both sides of it based on did we hit our numbers, did we not hit our numbers? Um, is this the right you know, management team to run this company and all this sort of stuff? 
they operated 90 day windows for all of these things. Well, it just so happens that 90 days happens to be about the time that when we put our focus on something, we start to lose it. If we try to use a year plan, which a lot of entrepreneurs do, they get, they read these books, you read a hundred books, I guarantee you, you have a hundred different opinions on how to set up a business. <laughs> exactly. You just do. But the one that's going to work is the one you're going to follow. None of them are wrong. None of them are right. But for you, there's only one way. It's the one you're going to follow, right? Yep. So when you think about it from that perspective, well, it's okay to have a one-year plan, but if you don't break it down to a 90-day and you figure out what am I going to do in this next 90 days and come hell or high water, you're going to focus on getting those things done in 90 days and you don't allow the shiny objects to come in. If something comes in and enters an opportunity that's, you know, hey, there's this new Podio software. If you put this in, you'll have the best sales <laughs> system. And everybody drops everything and they install Podio. Or, hey, you need infusion software. Hey, you know, you got uh, Kajabi or you got all these things and they do all this stuff. Or, hey, there's this, you know, deal flow plural software. You know, you put all this in your business, you're going to be rich tomorrow. No, you're not. And, and there's so right. much of that out there too. It's so, it can be there so is. distracting, you know. Right. The tools that people need in their business, the, the ones that they use to operate their business and stuff yeah. like that, it starts with a pen and paper. That's what it really starts with. It starts with focus and a pen and paper. Mm -hmm. You can use a lot of tools. And I'm a software developer. Um, I own a software company that, that helps manage processes and stuff. But I'm not pushing that first. I would never do that because yeah. there's so much more that has to be done structurally that requires your mind. You have to think it through. Only you can focus. You can't use a tool to focus. We think we can, but that's not realistic for any of us. Right. So, but that's the next step once we get dialed in on what we're going to do. So now we all have our sales and operations and we have our finance. And we have all these things. And yes, we have tools and software to help us with all that. Thank God we do because we're yeah. all much more productive than we would have been in the 80s when you had none of that. Right, so right. because we have that, that's great. But the focus I'm talking about is what are you trying to achieve? An example might be in the real estate community. You might say, I want to, I want to buy and sell five houses in the next 90 days. You know, maybe you're small and you're starting out and your goal is to do 20 in a year. Well, if we break that down, that might be five and a quarter. Great. Your focus should be doing nothing but that. That's what you should be focused on doing. How do I get those five houses? How do I bring them into my organization, into my asset pool? And how do I unload them? How do yeah. I do that? Not about whether or not I get Podio in or not. Not about whether or not I get this new widget that's going to now get me more email lists. You know, mm -hmm. yes, you need buyers. Yes, you need sell it, you know, people that want to sell to you and stuff like that. Yes, you need that stuff, but you got to focus on the five. And yeah. that's where the, that's what I'm talking about when you're talking about getting really dialed in and focused and not changing focus because you hear somebody else is doing something different than you. Right. So that comparative thing where you look at somebody else going, God, they did 12 houses last month. Who are they? They're gorillas out there. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but you're not. Yeah. That's not your, that's not who you are. That's not what you are. Your only comparison is you want to be better today than you were yesterday and better right. tomorrow than you are today. Yeah. You yep. keep moving in that line. You can do that in 90 day sprints. You try to do that over a year, whatever you're focused on a year from now, you're going to put it off. Cause what do people tend to do? Wait till the last minute. Procrastinate. If I have a 90 day goal, at least I'm going to do four things in a year. <laughs> Right. <laughs> if I have a one year goal, I'm going to do one thing in that year and I'm probably going to do it in December. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's, it's a natural because things get in the way. Yeah. There's so many things happening. So Frank, short of uh, people having a, a consultant or somebody there to kind of hold their hand through this, how, how do they hold themselves accountable uh, going through a process like this? Um, because the, it's easy uh, to, you know, I mean, uh, you know, some people that uh, don't have somebody holding them accountable for, let's say, losing weight or getting fit. They right. never get, they never get fit. Right. It's like the best of intentions. They just never make it to the gym because things get in the way. I mean, how do you, it's the same thing in, in business. How do people hold themselves accountable? Now, as you know, I'm a fan of people like hiring me to come in and do their stuff. Right, right. Let's look at it the other way. Let's say you're started. You don't have a kind of budget to do that. You should be partnering up with other people in the industry and using each other's accountability partners. Yeah. You can do that for free. There's nothing wrong with doing that. What you need is a voice of reason who thinks like you and they share some of the values that you share, that can help you get to the level, the next level that you're looking for. And it needs to be something that you do on a regular basis. If you're not talking to somebody weekly about what's going on, who are you talking to? And who's giving you the opinions that you need to, or who's giving you the feedback or the opinion that you're seeking about whatever it is that's going on? Right. How do you solve issues if they rise? Issues come up in business all the time. 
right? Sure. Whether it's an employee issue, a money issue, they just happen. How do you solve those, right? Well, if you don't have anybody to bounce it off of you other than yourself, well, chances are the issue is yours to begin with. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, and, and, and so in the real estate investing space specifically, uh, you know, there are masterminds. Yes, we know absolutely. we know some great masterminds, right? Um, and, but at, at the smaller scale level, a lot of real estate investors, let's say, because that's a big part of our audience, or, or even um, you know folks like title companies, lenders, and in any one market, they tend to um, maybe they put themselves there, but they're often on an island. They don't talk to other people in their market because right. they're worried about competition or somebody right. learning a trade secret, which there are very few trade secrets in this industry anyway. But right. all those things usually tend to keep people from talking to others and kind of masterminding, if you will, talking about best, uh, best practices and, and things like that. So mm. how do folks get around kind of those issues in their head? Is it just finding people that are outside of your market? I mean, there's a ton of ways with Facebook groups and I, uh, I think like that, that people have to just but... overcome that mindset. First and foremost, yes, there are competitors in there, but all you're looking to do is when you get into a group is you're looking to get into a group, a small one. You're not looking to say, let me go to a meetup that has 1,500 members in it. Right. Let me get up in front and tell them exactly what my strategy is for going to market. <laughs> That's not what you're talking about. But there's nothing wrong with getting three or four people together, sharing strategies when you're small. When And I'm talking you're real small. This is when it's you and maybe an assistant, maybe one or two bird dogs or something like that. If you're in that predicament, you shouldn't be worried about competition. You should be worried about survival. Yeah. Because you can only do so much. And if you don't get some guidance outside of yourself, when things do change and you spend that time hibernating and things start to change, you're going to feel the pinch. You're going to feel it worse than somebody else who's been out there sort of taking it on. So when you start putting together your little group of people, and what's wrong with, if you're going to do it, how about if you do it with a broker, a real estate agent, and somebody else? Use that as a mastermind. Yeah. So now you, you're, you need a real estate agent in many cases to help you find deals and help you offload properties if you need to do that. Unless you're wholesaling, then you need a wholesaler's list. But you need people like that. So you need a title company person. Maybe sure. they'll be your sounding board. Or maybe they'll be your board of advisors to help yeah. you. Because let's face it, you're feeding them. Those are yeah, people that benefit from you. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So, so Frank, and what about uh, folks that um, are, you know, a lot, of, a lot of what I would say about real estate investors, they tend to be in the opportunity business mm -hmm. and opportunities come up, things change, they move in different directions. And, you know, um, it, it's maybe more difficult. I'm just playing devil's advocate here, more difficult to kind of build processes around. This is how we do things because the way that we do things changes periodically as opportunities kind of arise. Any, mm -hmm. any thoughts there? If you structured yourself around accountability rather than on an org chart type thing, mm -hmm. and you put the responsibilities within the different departments. So let's say everybody's got a sales and marketing group. Everybody's got an operations group. Everybody has a finance group. So what does that all look like for you? If you started structuring it around there, when opportunities come, you're going to first and foremost know how that's going to impact your business. Because if it's just people, if it's just Frank and Mike and Mary over here, if something comes, we don't even know what we're going to do with it. Like, who's going to do what parts of this if right. that were to be a true opportunity? You know, you, you might be, you know, flipping single family homes and somebody comes along with a 12 unit apartment complex right. and wants you to get in on it. You're like, wow, that would be great. That's like 12 houses, right? <laughs> Is it? It's a whole other animal. Sure, sure. Are you even built and structured to be able to handle that kind of an opportunity? Now, granted, the entrepreneur in you is like going, this would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it just might be if you were partnered with the right people that could help you go through that process, it might. Mm -hmm. But then we go back to the focus part. Is that anywhere in your plans? Is that anywhere in your financial realm? Are you able to even execute something like that? Do you right. have the resources to go and knock down a deal like that or take it down? Can you do that? Right. So you have to be honest with yourself, too. And I think a lot of times when entrepreneurs are first out there, they're sold a bill of goods about what they're capable of doing with absolutely no resources. Well, how's that been working? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think you, you've been in business long enough. You've done enough homes yourself. It takes it takes a lot of work. Uh, it takes if it's not your money, it takes access to money. You can't yep. go in and expect a bank to do this for you. That's probably not going to happen. You're going to need the help of some private money. You're going to need somebody to, to believe in you and do this with you. Or you better have some deep pockets of your own, which is that's cool if you do. But that's usually not why people get into real estate in the first place. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know? So so what else? What have, what have we not covered yet, Frank? What have we not covered that uh, 
is part of the process of, of not just, you know, figuring out what you need, but how you kind of get down the road of putting systems in place to help you live a more, a better life, I guess. Once you lay out your accountability, well, yeah. something else that they need to start thinking about is as you list the roles that are done by those functions, and we, we do functions and structure first before we put people's names in there. Now, when you're by yourself, your name's going to be in every one of those boxes. <laughs> we know what that looks like. The org chart. Chief you, bottle you, washer. Yeah, exactly. CEO you're, and chief bottle washer. <laughs> but very quickly, you'll have, uh, you know, you have the, the need, if you will, to um, you, you'll realize that your 80 hours, you can't sustain that. Yeah. And yet the business requires 80 hours of work in order to keep moving forward week on week, week after week. So you know you need another body to help you do that. Yeah. Now, hopefully you have the resources to do that, but you're going to take on this new person. You have to be giving them the right things because do you even know what you're going to hire? A lot of people think, well, I need an assistant first. Really? What if you had a salesperson? What if you had somebody that was great at acquisitions? What if you had somebody that was great at, you know, whatever, you know, pick the thing that you do. And one of the things I like to tell people is if you do a delegate and elevate activity, envision a quadrant. And at the, across the top is everything you like or love to do. Across the bottom is everything you don't like, right? You just, you don't like to do it. And then put the line over here. And on this half over here, these are the things that you're good at. And this and this one down here, is, these are things you're not good at, okay? But up here, it's like, like and love. You're really good at them, like and love them. Down here, I don't like it and I'm good at it. I don't like it and I'm not good at it. Hmm. What people tend to do, what they have a, a consistency into it, is they're giving away this stuff up here. And this is the one that gives them the pain. This is the one that they're, they're asking themselves very clearly. They're going, I, I can't trust somebody to do this. Plus, I'm really good at this. Yeah. The, the other one that's the hard one, though, and that's the one they have to learn to give away. They're, they're okay with giving away. I don't like it. I don't want to do it. That's what the assistant's there for. But what their real need is usually is I'm good at it and I don't like it. So the, the joy in business, when you get rid of all the I don't likes, when you get rid of those and start having somebody else do those, by the way, somebody will enjoy doing that. Right, right. It's all based on different personalities, right? Absolutely. There are people that enjoy doing There's people that like to do accounting. God bless them. I'm not <laughs> that guy. <laughs> uh, you know, so that's there. But when you're doing this stuff up here, you don't have a job. You're not working anymore. It's too much fun. Yeah. It becomes fun because now you're doing all the stuff you really enjoy doing. Right. And so any entrepreneur, whether you're starting out day one, it's just you. If you lay out your business in terms of what the structure looks like and what the roles are under each of the pieces, and again, that book Traction would help somebody just guide them through it. It's got enough information in there to help yep. to get them started anyways. It's so, a great book. I'll definitely add a link uh, down below the video here for that. Definitely, for definitely worth it. Throw it on Amazon. I think they have it on Amazon or whatever. It's well worth it. I make all my clients read it, by the way. I won't even work with them until they read it because it's got the tools that I'm going to bring to them and bring to life for them. So the, the point that I'm getting at though is the next step, you can't grow until you find a way to remove the hours that you can't, that you just don't have. You, you can't give 80 hours every single week. Right. At some point you're going to burn out. Yep. So as you start delegating, removing all the things you don't like and adding people in, and it might, maybe you hate the finance side of the business. So you're going to get somebody in finance. They're going to take care of all your books. They're going to take care of all the HUD paperwork. They're going to take care of all that stuff. You hate that. But you love relationships. You love talking to people. Great. You own sales. Good for you. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Maybe you've got some project manager that's able to flip houses or uh, uh, fix houses. You know, mm -hmm. they're going to come in and they can work anywhere from a 5K to a 20, 30K budget and make the house beautiful. That's their thing. Awesome. You never like that anyways. Right. right. <laughs> Either every day. Right. So yep. you don't have to do that every day. So again, Delegate and elevate. When you look at the tool from this perspective, you keep the stuff up here. You give away this stuff here. Very quickly, you start finding yourself building a team, and you find the business is getting all of the work that it needs to get done done, which produces profits. This this of course assumes you have the right business model to begin with. That one that if if I buy a house here, and I input this much of improvement to it, and I sell it here, there's enough money left over to support me and all the people I hire. Yeah, that's, that's the yeah. Right? yeah. So, so as long as you're doing that right. You can grow your business. You can get over that ceiling. You just break through. Yep, yep. And, and Frank, maybe you could share some thoughts on if somebody just doesn't want to be a manager. They just <laughs> don't like to manage people. I mean, it's it's not – I think for uh, younger people, well, I think it takes a time in your career and in your life to kind of realize whether 
I enjoy working with people or, you know, I can do it if I have to, or I just simply don't like to manage other people. Awesome. You know, uh, but awesome. just share some thoughts on that. Cause I think a lot of entrepreneurs find themselves in that situation where they're, um, they know they're limited by their own capacity mm-hmm. and they just don't like to manage other people. <laughs> no, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, sometimes when people leave corporate world and yeah. they go into business for themselves, they truly enjoy doing this by themselves. And there's nothing wrong with it. You can make a great living, far better than what you get from a wage, if you're doing all the work yourself and you limit yourself. So let's say you knew you had the personal capacity to do five homes a quarter. We'll go back to that example. Well, then you don't have to keep worrying about hiring as long as you don't set a goal to do 20 homes in a single quarter. Yeah. If you try and take that on, you're going to quickly realize you can't be in 20 different places within that 90-day window and then selling those 20 places to make it worthwhile. Mm. And we all know what happens if we buy something that we don't sell. <laughs> Not good. So, yeah. again, you could do this business as a single person. I mean, I don't mean... Not married, I mean single <laughs> right, individual. Right. As an individual, you could do this business. You could do it part-time on the side while you have a job. It, I right. mean, that's very possible too. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yep. And so one of the things I often tell people is don't be pressured by what other people are doing to think you need to do that too. Oh, John got an assistant. Wow, I got to get an assistant. <laughs> yeah. Do you? Do you really need an assistant or is it just because John has one? No need to take on additional expenses that don't pay off a dividend for you or that you're not even going to know if you're going to get the value out of it. Yeah. And this is an industry that I think people tend to historically, you know, thump their chest and it's all about units and which doesn't matter at all. And, uh, it, it, it took me a while to realize that I'm part of, you know, I'm part of a franchise system. So we were, there was award ceremonies and lots of celebrations and lots of awards and ribbons and placards and stuff like that. And people want that stuff, even though it doesn't matter. Right. But yeah. I think people get hung up and I've had people say to me, I, I coach and mentor a lot of people that are like, I want to, I want to buy a hundred houses a year. And I'm like, do you know what that, I mean, you know what yeah. that means? Do you know what that I don't means? think exactly. I don't know, you may not want that. Right. You may, <laughs> you absolutely may not. Yeah. Now, if you have a whole staff running the business and you're gallivanting around at all the events and everything, that could be a great thing. Sure. I, sure. Know, I know lots of people that do a hundred plus homes a year. Some that yeah. do upwards of 300 homes a year. Yeah. Um, they have a very large staff though. They are yeah. not doing it as an entrepreneur out of their basement. I right. Absolutely. That. So yeah, yeah, there's a big difference. I just say, you know, at, at the end of the day, your personal happiness is going to come from, are you satisfied with the amount of money you're making for the effort you're putting in? Yeah. Right. That's the bottom line. If you're happy, don't worry about what somebody else considers happy for them. Absolutely. You know, the number of times I heard people say, you know, you you would tell them, I remember I did uh, one month, we did five homes and they're like, oh, I bet you can't wait to do 10. I'm like, can I celebrate the five first? (laughs) (laughs) I never did five before. You know, I'm like, can I celebrate the five before you tell me I'm I'm not good enough all of a sudden? Guess what? Five? I was good enough. Yeah. 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 (laughs) And so are you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, Frank. Well, hey, uh, any kind of final words of, I want you to kind of tell people how to get a hold of you, but any kind of final words of wisdom here, people that are listening saying, you know, they, this resonates with them. They feel like, Hey, I'm, I understand that I'm kind of a slave to my business. I need to be able to put some things in place to help truly have this as a business and not, you know, a hobby or, uh, or something that's totally enslaved me to it. I mean, any kind of final words of wisdom for those folks on where they go from here? Yeah, first and foremost is ask yourself is am I really a slave to it or am I just buying someone else's story that says I'm a slave to it? Mm. All right. If you're comfortable doing what you're doing, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, you have to be happy with what you have anyways. If you're not happy in the present moment, there's nothing in the future for you that's going to make you happy. <laughs> Very it's, true. It's really I mean that's that's the honest truth. So, yeah. be content with where you're at now. That's first. Second thing is get your plans in order, right? What do you want to get done in 90 days? Get very focused on that. So, if I'm happy today and I have a 90 day plan and I, and I truly believe that if I achieve that goal in 90 days, I'll still be happy. Like that will make me happy that I did that 90 day run. There's your, there's your start. Now, if you are truly looking for growth and you're ready to take it on and you want to do that, that's when you need to start structuring yourself and your plans need to be involved. You getting rid of tasks that you don't like to do anymore. And you have to be able to step out into your, your out of your comfort zone and bring people in. Yeah. And you, you have to trust them. But I don't need to document things that I do myself over and over again if I already know how to do it. But if I'm going to hire, I've got to get my documentation in order, at yeah. least for the things I'm going to have them do. So 
Um, when documentation is in order, called for, because I'm ready to hire somebody, that's fine. That's the only time I really need to do it. I don't have to do it when it's just me. Right. Not, not yet, anyways. Right. Yeah. So you can you can walk this thing through with baby steps. You don't have to grow at rapid speed. You don't have to be a multi-billion dollar Facebook company in eight years like they did. You don't have to do that. Sure. You know, this is all about what's what's your comfort level. Take it at your pace. It's your race, no one else's. Right? When you decide it's time to grow, then you now know what you need to do. You gotta you gotta you gotta make the job something that someone can do. You've got to get out of your head what needs to get on paper so they can do it like you want it. And you've got to be willing to take that risk because you're gonna own you're gonna own the responsibility of feeding that mouth. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, just like you do with your family. Now, you, yep. every time you hire, you have that responsibility to feed that person. Yep, yep. Right. Awesome, Frank. Oh. Hey, thanks for sharing with us today. If folks want to learn more about you, uh, I know you, have, you obviously have a consulting business, but sure. if they want to learn more about you or some of the things that you do, where, where should they go? Uh, my website is thesmartguidesguides.com. So it's T-H-E-S-M-A-R-T-G-U-I-D-E-S.com. Okay. Okay. Awesome. We'll, we'll add a link down below. We'll add a link for the book traction as well. It's a great book. I, I definitely recommend yeah. it. And, uh, now that we've talked about it, it's been a little while since I've read it. So I'm going to crack that thing open uh, this weekend or it's on my iPad. So I'm going to, there you go. Crack my, I'm not going to crack my iPad open, but you know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, Frank, Hey, really good to see you again. Uh, thanks so much for your time and appreciate it. And I hope a lot of people got value out of this and, uh, and, uh, I, uh, I'd love to get some feedback on, on, uh, today's episode. So, Hit me up on social media. Actually, if people don't know this, you can actually connect to each other, kind of like LinkedIn on uh, on uh, Flip Nerd now. So we oh, nice. had a launch that came out where you can connect people, you can message each other. So shoot right. me a message, let me know what you think. And um, Frank, we got to get you hooked up with a profile. I don't know if you have one or not. We got to get you hooked up. Make sure people we might be able going. to even find you on fa on uh, I was gonna say Facebook Flip Nerd. on Flip Nerd. <laughs> yeah. So Frank, hey, thanks so much uh, for your time today. Great to see you. Appreciate the information. Good stuff. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. All righty. Have a good day. good day. Are you a member of FlipNerd.com, the most robust real estate investing platform in existence, where you can find off-market wholesale deals and great vendors literally in your market? You can get access to advice from experts and learn about local clubs and events right in your backyard. If not, please visit FlipNerd.com and register for a free account. You can register in less than a minute. It's pretty much the coolest site that's ever existed in the real estate investing industry. So get on over to FlipNerd.com.